Instant classic this game, I can totally say why this spawned one of the greatest selling franchises of all time in uh, video game history, and why uh, it's one of the most uh, popular in the world. I understand why people loved this game when it first came out, because everything that happens in it makes sense. And it's very accessible to every gamer. I found a bow. Oh no. I would like to buy some air. Oh, you have no arrows. Goodbye. Hello, I accidentally walked in here. Goodbye. to buy some arrows. Thank you.
Now this bow shoots rupees. Watch. Yay. I have a bow. It is the only weapon that can hurt Goma.
found my water. Um, I thought I hadn't brought it into the room with me, but I, I found it. I was it was on the floor the whole time. We've got a bow. Uh, we have the bow now, uh, so we can use that bow, uh, which is good because it's the only weapon that can hurt Goma. Uh, in case you haven't been following along, uh, it was in the very first dungeon, uh, hidden, um, and uh, I found it. But, uh, we have it now, which is good, because it's the only weapon that can hurt Goma. Um, so things are looking up. Bathroom break. Alright. I need to endure the pain, but I also need something to take my mind off the pain. So we're going to talk about Star Wars. Uh, as I'm recording this, which basically means around six months ago, um, they announced that they were going to do an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. Which is cool. Obi-Wan is up there as one of my favorite characters. And I think, despite the fact that very many people are passionate about him, I do think he is still underrated. Um, so I'm happy about that, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, meanwhile, the Han Solo movie looks like it's, like, going down in flames, and I don't want it to, I want it to be good, but I don't think it's gonna be that good. Um, and then they also announced they're doing a Jabba the Hutt movie, which sounds like it was a joke. Like, I don't think it was, but that sounds like the kind of thing they would say as a joke, because... Literally no one asked for that. Uh, and then they also confirmed they're doing slash still doing. They kind of like half said they were going to do it. And they hinted that it would be Josh Trank. And then Fantastic Four came out and they were like, let's not have Josh Trank do anything uh, related to Star Wars at all. Which was probably a good call. Um, and then they just didn't talk about Boba Fett for a while. And now they've announced, oh yeah, by the way, we're probably going to do a Boba Fett movie too. Um, and here's the thing, Boba Fett is, might be my favorite Star Wars character. I'm one of those guys. I think he's awesome and the coolest. How, how did that hit me when I was a full tile above the exact thing that hit me? Regardless. I'm totally on board for a Boba Fett movie, but... It has to be handled like Mad Max Fury Road, where Boba Fett barely talks. He can talk, but his the whole reason he had such a cool appeal in the originals was that he was the strong, nearly silent, awesome, kick-butt character that didn't take crap from no one. I don't want them to continue the prequel version of Boba that's a little kid hell-bent on revenge that's whiny and wants that misses daddy. I don't want that Boba Fett. I want the, the original trilogy Boba Fett that was literally nothing like that personality. I want a disintegration in the movie. I want him to have a contract with the Empire that where he, got, he disintegrates someone and whoever hired him doesn't have to be Darth Vader. It could be Darth Vader. That could work, but it doesn't have to be Darth Vader. Whichever Empire contact hired him was like, dude, I didn't want you to disintegrate him. 
and he then Boba just goes, "You didn't specify," and like just demands the money anyways. Um, that's like a specific line and scene that I want. Um, if we're getting into like what should the actual plot be, here's what I want the plot to be, and this is just because I'm a writer and I want to write this movie, but I never will because I'm certainly not on Disney's radar. Um, I want it to be like Boba Fett is tasked with getting maybe one person, but in my head it's it's two people. Getting two people uh, to someone alive. He's bounty hunting, like it is a bounty hunting movie. He's going to deliver them to a person who wants them because they've done something to wrong whoever hired Boba. But he has to get them there alive. And there's a bunch of people that are trying to kill whoever he's, whoever the bounty is, uh, for a separate reason. And so the entire thing is Boba is protecting these people because he has to take them alive, and they're like, basically on Boba's side because, you know, being delivered alive is still preferable to dying. So they're like, yes, please protect us. Um, and like throughout the movie. They like kind of bonds and they get to know each other and they like start to respect each other. And it's and then they finally get to the contact and you think it's gonna be that heroic moment where the rough and tumble uh morally gray character realizes, wait, I can't give this person up. It's not right of me. I'll let them go free and say I killed them instead and just demand the price for the dead bounty instead of the alive bounty. Um, and, it, like, the scene is set up that that's exactly what's gonna happen. And then Boba Fett just goes, No, I need my money. Like, I, this is my job. My job is to get you to this person alive. And I'm going to deliver you. And I'm not gonna let... I, I do respect you, but I'm not gonna let my personal feelings for you get in the way of the fact that I was hired to do this job. So I'm gonna do the job. And he wouldn't say it in such, like, great lengths because he's Boba Fett and he shouldn't talk that much, as I specified when I first started talking about this. But I really want that to happen. Of, like, you think he's going to turn out to be, like, a really cool guy, and then he still turns out to be this ruthless bounty hunter because that's literally what the character is. Why would you change that? I am really worried they're going to try to make him into a, quote, good guy because his appeal is not being a good guy. I'm okay with him having like morals and a code that he goes by, but he's not a good guy. He's a cool guy who does whatever he has to to get the job done. And that's why he is such a popular character. I'm, the reason I'm worried about the movie, and they don't even have like a writer attached as of the time I'm recording this or anything, or a plot summary or anything, but the reason I'm worried is because when, aside from Mad Max, which again, everyone loves that movie, so like clearly they did something right, but I don't think Hollywood has learned from it yet. When Hollywood tries to make a spin-off, the spin-off character will always, like, they will throw out whatever personality trait they have to in order to make the story seem like a classic Hollywood story. Which, in the case of both Han Solo, which I'm worried about, too. That's another reason. This is a prequel thing. Uh, the Han Solo movie is, obviously. Uh, it's young Han Solo. And the, the reason... There uh, there've obviously been the whole Han shoots first debate is centered around the fact that when we first meet Han, he is not a good person. He's not an awful evil person, but he is not a good person. And I'm really worried they're just going to say F that in this own prequel movie we'll have him start off as morally gray but then by the end he will realize what the right thing to do is I'm really worried that's what they're going to do because then he will be inconsistent with the Han Solo we get at the beginning of New Hope that's what I'm worried about and I'm similar worried for Boba Fett I'm worried they will throw out what makes Boba Fett so appealing in order to make him the hero of the story when he should not be the hero he should be the he should be mad max in that like he shouldn't even be the character that talks the most and unlike mad max 
he shouldn't be a good guy. He should still be a ruthless bounty hunter because that's why people love him. So those are my thoughts on that. Uh, Jabba the Hutt movie, like, has about 10% chance of actually turning into a cool concept that I will get excited about. Um, like, there's... I, I could see a reality where they explain what the plot is going to be for the Jabba the Hutt movie is, and it actually sounds cool and interesting. But I, there is a chance of that, and I could picture that in my head. But the likelihood of that happening is slim to none. 10% is not slim to none. 10% is actually, like, probably... That, there's, there's a difference between those two numbers. I'm keeping it at 10%, but the odds are low that I will end up being A, excited about the movie, or B, like the movie once it comes out. Because until they expand on that concept more, that is a concept that itself does not sound like it makes for a good movie. Don't you dare. Oh, that got close. I guess let me know what you think of the Boba Fett thing. That, that is something I'm passionate about. And like, if, if there was a movie I could choose to write, it would be that. Like, there's a couple of, like, franchise, big franchise thing ideas I have. Actually, that's not true. If I had the choice to write a Star Wars thing, I would want to write a Knights of the Old Republic TV series. That is a passion of mine. That, like, I actually... I know... Oh! Oh, thank you, God. I guess God really likes my ideas for the Boba Fett movie, because he's just letting this happen. Um... I really wish I could write a Knights of the Republic TV series. And, like, as irrational as it is, I deep down hope that that ends up happening. That's something I'm really passionate about. Um, hang on, water break. And yes, that could lead into a KOTOR 2 series. Uh, I would actually write the ending of KOTOR 2, and I would have it thought out and well made. Um, and then I know the old Republic RPG kind of continues the story, uh, but I don't like that story, so in my head I also have like an outline of what I would want a third sequel series to be. Um, none of that really matters, but it is in my head. But yeah, aside from that, I wish I could write uh, the, the night series. Um, what else? I really want to write a Moon Knight movie. I just want a Moon Knight movie to exist, and it's in the MCU, but it is a psychological thriller. Um, that's a thing that I wish was a thing that happened. Um, and I would also super enjoy writing such a thing as well. Holy crap, we're back. Good thing I have this bow, uh, which is the only thing that can uh, hurt Goma. Um, it's one freaking hit! It's one freaking hit! Are you serious? Oh, that makes me even angrier. That's so dumb. Good lord. Well, I aimed for the eye of Goma with my bow. Good for me. Holy crap. God, the epilepsy every time I pick up a Triforce piece. It's not great. Ugh. My god. Oh, good. Those... Oh, oh, F that. Oh, F that so hard. Can I 
shoot these things? No. No, why would those things ever be defeated? Alright, well here's the thing, I have no idea where the- Oh! Maybe that dumb old man will give me his dumb old sword now. Why did that hurt me? I have mastered using it, I feel like. No, I have not mastered using it, according to this small old man. Well, time to look around for that eighth dungeon now, I guess. I think it's top left. I think it's even further top left. But dude, I don't effin' know. Okay, it does about as much as a sword strike, that's good. Okay, I have to be able to like push something or bomb something here, right? Wait, no, there are, there are eight dungeons and I've only done six. Dang it. Dang it. There's two more. And that's before the final dungeon. Dang it. Oh, I hate this game. <laughs> uh, kill me. Um, let's just see what's over here, I guess. Wait, what is over here? Uh, over here? Here. I feel like- oh crap. I don't like that. I don't like that much at all. The game doesn't like that either, I like that. Alright, well we got a bow. And I feel like that's what's important in today's, uh, today's little session. So we're not going to hit retry and hit bites the dust. We're going to save. And, um... We're going to call it there. Uh... Please don't crash. Where are you, game? Holy crap. Okay. 255, is that right? Now I just have to know. Okay. Scared me a little bit there, game. Not sure why you went like that. Also, I don't have 255 rupees. That's a lie. Maybe that does, maybe that number in the menu does count my deaths, but the deaths also just cap out at 255 for no reason. Apparently the computer just can't count more than that. Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. That's, that's it for tonight. Um... Ah, for good measure, let's just die again and save. Kill me. I could eat an Octorok, but I won't. I'll die instead. Do it. Kill me. Do it now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're calling it there for the night for sure. Please stop freaking out on me. Alright. Good night, everybody.